Hey guys, our next big topic is going to be uh, differential equations. Uh, we've already covered this a little bit, um, but we're going to look at a special type that's 100% going to be on the free response section of your um, AP exam, uh, assuming we're still taking that. Um, so remember, a differential equation um, is an equation in x and y that involves a derivative of y. So you're gonna see like a dy over dx in your equation or a y prime or a y double prime, something with a derivative um, in terms of x and y. All right, so we've done ones with like the y prime equals f of x before. Um, the types we're gonna do now are called separable differential equations. And what that means is that you can get all the x's on one side of the equation and all the y's on the other side of the equation. All right, so the strategy we're gonna use is called separation of variables. So you'll hear people say that you need to separate and solve. And that's what we're gonna do right here. All right, so let's try example one. All right, so to separate this, we are going to be multiplying by the denominators. So we're gonna multiply both sides by y, and that's gonna move this y over to this side. And then we're gonna multiply by dx to move the dx to this side. So we're gonna multiply by dx, we're gonna multiply by y. Same thing over here. All right, so here the dx's will cancel. And we'll be left with y dy. And over here the y's will cancel, and we're left with 2x dx. All right, so now our goal is to get y as a function of x. So we want y equals something. All right, so we're going to integrate. And the integral of y is y squared over 2. And the integral of 2x is 2x squared over 2. And the 2's will cancel, so just x squared. And we're doing an indefinite integral, so we need to make sure we put a plus c. That's very important on those free response questions that have this. Um, if you don't put the plus c, you're only eligible for like the first two points. Okay, after that, um, if you don't put the plus C, you get zero points. And usually these are worth about six points out of the nine on that one question. So it's a big deal. Make sure you put that plus C. All right, so now we need to get Y by itself. So we're just doing some basic algebra here. Uh, multiply by two, Y squared equals two X squared plus C. Okay, yes, that's technically two C, but remember two C is just another random constant. So you can call this one C1 if you want, and then just call this one C, um, but you don't even have to make that distinction, all right? Um, so last step is gonna be to take the square root and we get Y equals, don't forget your plus or minus when you take the square root, plus or minus the square root of two X squared plus C. All right, and that's called the general solution because we don't know what C is, and that is as far as we can take it as long as we don't have an initial condition to plug in. All right, but you will almost certainly always be given an initial condition, so that is what part B is right here. So we have the general solution. All right, what if we were given this? Can we find the particular solution? All right, remember this is X and Y, and so we have our equation already, so let's just plug these numbers in. So negative 3 equals, I'm going to leave off the plus or minus for this part, square root of 2x squared plus c. And actually, I need to plug in 1 for that x right there. 1 squared. All right, let's solve for c. So we'll square both sides. So 9 equals, and that's just 2 right there, 2 plus c. And we'll subtract the 2 over. So 7 equals c. So we end up with y equals the square root of 2x squared plus 7. All right, let's talk about that plus or minus. So one thing about particular solutions is you should never have a plus or minus. You have to actually decide which one it is. Is it the positive version or the negative version? And the way you can tell that is by your initial condition. All right, if your initial, if the y value is going to be negative here, a square root by itself is never negative. It's always a positive number. So if the y value is going to be a negative, that means that this square root has to be a negative square root. That's the only way you can get a negative in this situation. So you actually have to pay attention to that initial condition in more than one way um, to make a determination here. All right, I encourage you to pause the video and try this next one on your own, and then unpause it and see how you did. All right, so for this next one, we're going to need to, um, I'm going to rewrite this y prime as dy over dx first. 
All right, then we're gonna need to divide by our square root of y and multiply by our dx. So we'll end up with dy over the square root of y, and that's gonna equal x squared dx. All right, time to integrate. Okay, if you wanna rewrite this one as with the dy to the side, so it's one over the square root of y, and then you know that square root of y is y to the one half, so this is y to the negative one half, because it's on the denominator. So if we add one to that, we get y to the positive one half, and then we would divide by one half, uh, which is the same thing as multiplying by two. So two y to the one half. Over here, we get x cubed over three, and then remember your constant of integration. All right, I like to plug in the initial condition right now. We didn't have this option in the last problem because we did it in two different steps. But when they give it all to you as one problem, I like to go ahead and plug that in right now. Let's go ahead and find C, and then we'll worry about solving for Y at the end. All right, so this will be two square root of four. And then this will be three cubed over three plus C. All right, so that's two times two, which is four. Uh, that's 27 divided by 3, which is 9. And so subtract that over, and we get negative 5 is equal to C. All right, so I'm going to plug that in, and we get 2 square root of Y is equal to X cubed over 3 minus 5. All right, so we need to divide by 2. So square root of Y is equal to X cubed over 6 minus five halves, and then we need to square everything. So we end up with y equals, and just put this in parentheses, x cubed over six minus five halves, quantity squared. And there's no plus or minus to worry about here or anything like that, so that's it. All right, once again, try the one on the back, um, see how you do, and then unpause the video and um, see if you got it right. All right, so similar process here. We need to get the y squared over here and multiply by the dx. So we end up with dy over y squared. And then 4x times dx. Okay, we're gonna integrate this. So that's y to the negative two. So it'll become y to the negative one divided by negative one, which is just really putting a negative in front there. This will be 4x squared divided by two, which reduces to 2x squared. Don't forget our constant of integration. Okay, again, I like to plug in that constant, um, that initial condition immediately um, once I know what my equation is going to look like. All right, so if we plug in three, this is gonna be negative one third, because that y to the negative one goes to the bottom. And then this will be two times one squared plus c. So that's just two, subtract two over. Uh, keep in mind that we're going to want a common denominator here. So we can combine them together. So I'm going to subtract 6 thirds, because that's the same thing as 2. And so C is equal to negative 7 thirds. All right, so let's write out what we have here. We have negative 1 over Y is equal to 2X squared minus 7 thirds. All right, we need to uh, multiply everything by negative 1. So we get 1 over Y is equal to... I'm just going to flip these around, so 7 thirds minus 2x squared. All right, there's a couple of different things you can do here. Um, one is kind of the ugly way, and I'm going to show you that because um, there's a free response question that happened recently where they, they wrote their answer in the ugly way on the grading guidelines. So feel free to do that. All we really have to do here is flip these over. All right, if you take the reciprocal of 1 over y, you get y equals. If you take the reciprocal of this, you get 1 over that whole thing. All right, now this is kind of ugly because it's a complex fraction. You have the 7 thirds and the 1, but that is a perfectly acceptable answer. That's the way they wrote it on the college board's grading guidelines a couple years ago. Now, if it were me, I would want to get a common denominator here so it looks a little nicer. So that's what I'm going to do. So this is going to be 7 minus, uh, we're multiplying this by 3 over 3. So 6x squared all over 3. Then when we do our reciprocal thing to get y equals, um, we can a lot easier to take the reciprocal of this. So we end up with the three on top and the seven minus six X squared on the bottom. So that's a much nicer looking answer. And that's the way I would prefer to see it if I was 
work in this problem. All right, last thing we're gonna do is talk about some word problems um, that use differential equations. And they almost always um, rely on proportionality. So this little section is um, something that we covered in Algebra 2, direct proportion you've been covering since probably eighth grade or even before that. Um, so anytime something's directly proportional to something, uh, you have that first thing is equal to a constant, which we usually call k, times the second thing. So directly proportional, y is directly proportional to t, means y equals kt. If they leave out the word directly and just say the word proportional, then that's understood to automatically mean directly proportional. The other two, they'll have to actually put the word there. So inversely proportional is y equals k divided by t. And jointly proportional is when you have two different items that you're proportional to. So this is very similar to direct proportion where we're going to multiply by those items. So this would be y equals k. Notice that all three have a constant in them. So this would be y equals kx times 5 minus x. All right, so they want us to write a differential equation to represent these following problems. So a certain population P increases at a rate, right, circle that word, proportional to time. Remember what rate means in calculus, that is a derivative. All right, so we want the derivative of P, so dP over dt, and it's proportional. They didn't give us a specific word, so I mean, that means direct proportional. So that'll be k times whatever it's proportional to, which is just time in this case. So dp over dt equals kt. All right, y'all try letter b real quick, and then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, a certain population p increases at a rate proportional to the square root of the population. So rate of p, once again, so dp over dt. Proportional, so direct proportion, k times something. And the something we're proportional to is the square root of the population. So the square root of p. All right, letter C. Let p of t represent the number of bears in a population at time t, where t is greater than or equal to zero. The population p of t is increasing at a rate directly proportional to 800 minus p of t. All right, so there's our rate of p once again, dp over dt. Direct proportionality, so k times something, and it's proportional to 800 minus p. Make sure you're putting parentheses there because so, that constant would need to distribute if we put it in there. Okay, um, notice I didn't put the of t's on the p's. That's fine. Just for simplicity's sake, you don't have to write of t every time. All right, last one. Uh, Certain population y increases at a rate inversely proportional to 250 over y. So we still have our rate dy over dt. And inverse proportional means we're going to have that k on top. And then what we're proportional to is in the denominator. So 250 minus y. All right, so you have worksheet one there in your packet to do some practice problems on this. Um, and I hope to see you in our... Google Hangout Meet sessions to ask some questions and get some help from me in a more live setting. Y'all have a good day.